Hey y'all, it's Demon360. And this video is essentially what we're doing with it is we are clarifying the multiverse saga, like the release schedule, some minor changes I made, and then certain don't mind the background. Certain questions I did a community post. I'm like, leave some question if you have any questions, if you want me to clarify, I got you. And some people did, not everyone did. Please leave more comments, guys. Leave more comments. That'd be more, that'd be fun. More in, more time for me to interact with you all. But um, we got some questions, but basically I want to clarify like how we're going to do the release schedule for phase four. Um, some minor changes I made to phase four. And then the timeline, because actually, let's just start with the timeline. Um, obviously I released New World Order. Um, you should, you should go watch it because it's the only thing in the multiverse saga, and I think it's pretty good. I th I'm proud with how that story came out. Plus, it really sets up Thunderbolts and the street level stuff moving forward. Um, yeah, all of that stuff. But yeah, New World Order is not the first in the timeline, as many people have pointed out. Because when I did the original slate, Fantastic Four and Black Widow were supposed to come out first, and that's because they were the first in the timeline. So Fantastic Four is obviously next. Um, so when Fantastic Four releases, then Black Widow will release. I will do a time timeline playlist where I will put Fantastic Four, then Black Widow, then New World Order, then re the rest of Phase Four, which does take place after New World Order. So like Scarlet Witch, Loki, Eternals, Multiverse of Madness, Wakanda Forever, Thunderbolts, and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania will all come after New World Order. But speaking of how we're going to release, I am pushing Fantastic Four back slightly to like mid to end of April is my plan. And the reason I'm doing it this way, it's actually a good reason, is because I'm not just working on Fantastic Four. I'm hoping with my intentions, my intentions are to, um, I'm going to try and release Fantastic Four, Black Widow, and Scarlet Witch within a matter of weeks. So I'm pushing Fantastic Four back slightly so I can get all three of them done together. Their stories are almost done, like their scripts are written. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and like release Fantastic Four one week, then have Black Widow up next week, Scarlet Witch that week. Then obviously we're going to move on to the next wave of projects, which probably won't release until like mid to late summer. So you won't really see Loki, Eternals, and Multiverse of Madness for a little while. Um, but th the intention is to get them out together and then... 2024, get Wakanda Forever, Thunderbolts, and Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania out. Hopefully. Unless changes happen. Changes always happen. That's just how it goes. But, um, yeah, I guess that's the next thing I should talk about, is the fact that the ending to Phase 4 is Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, not Avengers Quantumania, like I originally pitched. And I had a couple reasons for this. Number one... Um, I was really struggling to find a way to make the plot of Quantumania into an Avengers movie. Like, I was really struggling with trying to give the intro to Kang the Conqueror a full-on um, Avengers team. Even though it's probably the most practical, trying to get all of those different characters. Because, um, you know, I have to introduce other characters, like... Carol Danvers, and War Machine, and trying to set up the Avengers team in the first place, and come up with that whole team. It was a mess. I watched Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. It was fine. But, um, I think, actually, just seeing the movie kind of motivated me to make a rewrite of it, because it was fine. But that was all Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was. It was fine. And... 
I think it could, there was so much. Here's the thing. The fix for Quantumania is so simple. But yet it changes the movie on a fundamental level. And the entire movie, not just the ending, the entire movie. And I think if we go by that logic and by that fix, which I will reveal when we talk about Quantumania, when we start talking more about it, I think Quantumania could have been one of the best Marvel films. Easily the best Ant-Man film. But because they chose to take it in a different direction, it didn't, it didn't work out. But yeah, release, release. And also, um, the last thing I should mention is uh, Daredevil um, Season 4. So, originally, Daredevil Season 4 was part of the Multiverse Saga slate. It's not part of the slate anymore. It was not shelved. It's still happening. It's just, originally, it was going to take place in between Eternals and Multiverse of Madness, if I'm, if I'm correct. I'm going to release Eternals, then Multiverse of Madness. Daredevil Season 4 will come out when it comes out. And it will not be connected to the Multiverse Saga in any way. I want to keep that show. I don't want to... Like how the original Daredevil did not interfere with the Infinity Saga. Season 4 is not going to... Like, it'll reference it in, like, newspaper articles. But you aren't going to really see anything connect. Like, Kang the Conqueror is not going to show up in Daredevil Season 4. Sorry to tell you. But yeah, here are the questions. All right. Uh, so the first person says, I don't know if they want their names revealed or not. So I'm just going to read off their questions without giving a name. My main question is, if you are rewriting Eternals and will make a new story altogether, would you change the race and gender of the characters to be more comic accurate because MCU race and gender swap some of the characters? Um, I mean, to be fair, I am going with these characters under the assumption that they are all the same actors as they are in the movies. To be honest, I don't really care. I'm fine with how they are in the MCU. I don't really know or care whatever they look like in the comics. Character comes first. The outside comes first. Um, yeah, if you feel they need to be a different race or gender, you do you. But I'm going with the intention that they are the same actor or actress from the movie. Um, obviously we are, um, if you've seen the thumbnail for Eternals, the, the poster thumbnail that I released, um, you know that we're only using six out of the ten Eternals. Um, those are Cersei... Icarus, Ajax, Athena, Gilgamesh, and Druig, Kingo, Fastos, Sprite, and Makari. They are not in this movie. Um, but yes, it w pretty much all of these stories are going to be brand new, Eternals included. Um, yeah, I don't want to give too much away about the story of Eternals because it's going to be a bombshell plot twist if I reveal the story of Eternals. Um, it's going to be a bombshell of a plot twist, but, um, yeah. It is a brand, it's a completely brand new story, um, with those characters. I think it's really cool. I think it also connects to the multiverse way more, way more than the original movie. So, oh yeah. Also, will Taskmaster be in the Thunderbolts lineup? And if Ghost will come back in your Thunderbolts pre-write, would it be the male version from the comic book or continuing the MCU Ghost story? And also, will Taskmaster be Tony Masters? Got a lot of desire. No, Ghost is going to be the same as she is in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Not Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, yeah, Ghost. Um, if Ghost were to come back, I, I'm not revealing the Thunderbolts team yet. If you've seen New World Order, you know at least two two of the six members. You know two of the six members if you've seen Captain America New World Order. I'm not confirming if Ghost or Taskmaster are part of the lineup. Because I would give spoilers away. 
What I will say um, for Taskmaster, which yes, will be Tony Masters, because Dracov's daughter serves another role um, where she can't be Taskmaster. So I am going with Tony Masters. But um, yes, Taskmaster will have some role in Thunderbolts. I can't confirm that he'll be a member of the team, but he will have some part in Thunderbolts, even if it's like a boss battle. Like, I don't know how big the role is going to be because there's a lot to juggle with that story. But yeah. And then lastly from this person is, in your Black Panther Wakanda Forever rewrite, will Namor be from Atlantis or Talokan? I'm saying Talokan, but Atlantis does count because I'm not really using Atlantis either way. Like, it can be Atlantis if that's the desired thing, but currently it's Talokan, but it could be either or. It's not really going to change that story. Honestly, Wakanda Forever as a rewrite is not really changing all that much, if I'm being honest. And then this is from, we only got two commenters, but they left a lot, which is nice. Please, comment more. I want interaction. But, um, number one, is Kang still the new Thanos, or is it Doctor Doom now? No, Kang is still the new Thanos. Kang, he is our guy. The different variants of Kang, all of that. It's still called the Kang Dynasty, um, not the Doom Dynasty. But yes, Kang is still gonna be your new Thanos. Um, I am simplifying his story, though, because one thing I figured out about, um, MCU Kang, and I think it's why some people are struggling with him, his story is really overly complicated. It's like there's a multiversal war, there's a council, then there's a renegade Kang, and then there's He Who Remains, and then there's Victor Timely. It's a mess. And so, one of the big things I'm doing with Kang the Conqueror is I am really simplifying the different Kang variants to a huge degree. Um, I mean, there are still going to be variants of Kang. Like, it's not just Kang the Conqueror. There's also Immortus, Scarlet Centurion, Rama Tut, um, Victor Timely, blah, blah, blah. Like, all of those characters, like, like they st all the variants are still around. I'm just simplifying the purpose of the variants. Um, the Council of Kangs is still going to exist, but you get what I'm going for. And I don't know how much of a spoiler this is, but Kang is not going to get beaten by ants during Quantum Mania. I'm sorry to people who wanted that to happen. He isn't going to lose to ants. I don't care if they're like super evolved ants. He's just not going to lose to ants in his first debut as the new big bad that just that can't happen. But um, speaking of Doctor Doom, to all those who have told me not to use Doctor Doom in the first Fantastic Four movie as the villain, I hear you. I hear you. In fact, the original pitch for this movie had Mole Man as the main antagonist, not Doctor Doom. And to be honest, Mole Man is still in the movie. <laughs> He's in the re in the pre write, re write, whatever you want to call it. But there is a reason why Doctor Doom is in the Fantastic Four that goes outside of Fantastic Four itself. Obviously, if you've read Secret Wars, either version, you know Doctor Doom is pretty essential to Secret Wars. And even though his role in Secret Wars will be a little different, considering what Kang's is, Doom is there's a reason why he's in this saga and even though i will use other fantastic four villains in the future there's a reason why doom has to show up in this movie and number two is originally you mentioned rewriting thor love and thunder and hawkeye in this phase but then during the next slate reveal they were gone have they been removed outright um this isn't really spoilers i guess but no they're both in phase five um Thor Love and Thunder is actually the first entry in Phase 5. I guess I can just blatantly state that. Um, I don't think it's much of a spoiler for Phase 5. It doesn't really give much away for what we're doing with Phase 5. But yeah, both Hawkeye 
and Love and Thunder are in Phase 5. Um, Hawkeye has a legitimate reason for being in Phase 5, but you'll see in time. Love and Thunder, to be honest, I thought it fit better in Phase 5, and I'm still really salty about that movie. And even though I have a really good pitch for the rewrite, like a really good pitch, um, yeah, I, I'm still salty about the original movie. And even Quantumania didn't get me as salty as Love of Thunder. So I'm like, I, I need a divorce from Thor Love and Thunder. That was a, that was a very sad movie. It's one of the few Marvel movies that gets genuinely worse over time for me. Like most Marvel movies, like even Ant-Man and the Wasp, when I rewatched that in the first Ant-Man, got better for me. Thor Love and Thunder gets worse on rewatches. That is almost impossible for Marvel movies, except for Dark World. Not great. Okay, number three. Are all the Disney Plus shows being made into films or being removed outright? Partially. Um, WandaVision isn't happening anymore, but elements from WandaVision are being implemented into the Scarlet Witch movie and into Wanda's story moving forward. Like, I, like I've i made this no secret. WandaVision is my favorite thing in MCU Phase 4, even more so than Spider-Man. Um, and it's one of, like, my top five, top three, maybe, MCU projects. It was probably the hardest thing for this saga was letting it go. But elements from it are still going to happen. But, um, yeah... Like, obviously, um, Hawkeye, I've already confirmed. Falcon the Winter Soldier is now New World Order. But yeah, mo a good amount of the Disney Plus shows will be reformed into movies. Some of them, like What If and She-Hulk, will not. Um, because they just don't fit the, um, the formula. And also because I don't need She-Hulk. Um, or the What If characters. Like, m a lot of, like, what I'm doing... Like, there's a lot of characters that are just being, like, kicked out of this saga. Like, Echo, Ironheart, She-Hulk, um, couple of the young Avengers, like, Thor's daughter. Uh, like, they're just getting booted because there's too many characters in Phase 4. It's too much. We need to cut down. So, yeah, like, Ironheart and Echo obviously won't be made into movies by that token, but, yeah... Like, I don't want to spoil any of the other Disney Plus shows, but also, like, the Guardians Holiday Special is most likely canon to this saga. I don't see any reason for it not to be. Werewolf by Night, we're gonna, f we're gonna fit Werewolf by Night in somehow. Um, actually, that is one thing I'd like to talk about, is Guardians 3. I don't have Guardians 3 on my slate yet, because... I want to see what James Gunn does first, and honestly, if James Gunn just delivers a banger finale to the Guardians, that might go into the same camp as Shang-Chi and the two Spider-Man movies of canon to this saga, but not being rewritten. We'll see how Guardians 3 goes. I think it'll be solid considering James Gunn's on it, and hopefully the Henry Cavill cult will not ruin the movie for everybody, but DC has some weird fans. But yeah, and also the holiday special. If Guardians 3 is canon, the holiday special is canon too. But, um, and lastly, number four is, which projects are you most excited about and which character do you enjoy the most? I've, I'm gonna start with characters and then I'll go into projects. For characters, I've really enjoyed writing the different Kang variants. I've really enjoyed, like, making them different. Um, even coming up with Kang and his character, and, like, his... Ow. Um, his backstory and, like, all of that, simplifying him has been so fun. But I'm gonna say... Um, I think the character that I have a really special place for in this saga, is Yelena Belova. I love the story she has in Phase 4 and moving into Phase 5. 
um, the story that I get to tell with that character. Um, I think she, ultimately, once the once Secret Wars, the credits roll and the video ends, and you all like, subscribe, because you're gonna like and subscribe, and then you leave, I think Yelena will either be the most underappreciated character arc, or will be the most beloved. Be the beloved. I'm gonna take my life. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I really enjoy her character arc. But for projects, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna say Fantastic Four, because obviously that's the next project. I know that's the most hyped project, is Fantastic Four, obviously. But, um, Multiverse of Madness has been really, really cool. Um, here's the thing about Multiverse of Madness, and then I'm gonna shut up. We're starting from the ground, from ground zero. No America Chavez, no Scarlet Witch, no Illuminati. Like, we're literally starting from the absolute bottom of Doctor Strange and a plot about the multiverse. And what that is turned into, which is so much different from the original movie, it is, it is epic, it is multiverse, it is madness. I am going to live up to the title. It is madness. There are some tragic elements, some really somber moments. It's a really, really powerful story that I truly am proud of. I'm using some elements from the What If series to create this film. You might have an idea of where we're going by that statement alone, but I don't want to spoil it. But yeah, Multiverse of Madness, I think is going to go down as one of my favorite projects in Phase 4. Like, it's... I'm honestly more excited for that getting to that one than a lot of the other ones. Like, I'm excited for all of them, but Multiverse of Madness, I'm especially excited for. But yeah, that's the clarify Q&A stuff. Like and subscribe, because I told you so. You don't have to do it. Um, you can always change your mind, but do it. Do it. That's Star Wars. This is a Star Wars channel, too. Anyway, bye.